Hi, I'm Bryce Bond. And I'm Linda Pellerin. And this is Dimensions in Parapsychology. Do you know her today? We have a man by the name of Bill Cooper. That's right. He was a former uh, United States Naval Intelligence briefing officer. Yes, he was on the briefing team. Mm -hmm. And also, when I was reading some of his material, he says something interesting in there. He's just out there to preserve the Constitution and the future of mankind. He's a true patriot. What we yes, call, he he's, we could call him the uh, Ralph Nader Rambo of r revealing secrets. Yes, top government secrets. It's going to be an interesting you know, show. He talks about the secret government and also the cover-up of the Kennedy assassination as well. Yes, I'd like to know more about the secret government and also UFOs. Let's meet our guest right now, Bill Cooper. This is our guest, Bill Cooper. And he was with uh, Naval Intelligence. And Bill, I want to thank you very much for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. You're a big guy. Well, <laughs> you don't see my father. <laughs> <laughs> you mean he's bigger than you? Oh, yes, he's bigger than me. I sit in one of our lawn chairs in, in uh, Arizona out in the lawn. It's beautiful there. And uh, he came to visit and sat in the same chair, and it collapsed. <laughs> oh, my God. Bill, I want to find out why you got into this. I mean, you, you're, you're, you're the Ralph Nader Rambo for revealing secrets that, you know, that obviously the government wants to suppress and not let us know about. Well, they do want to suppress them, but um, I, I really don't like or want the, uh, the the label of a hero or a Rambo or anything like that. I'm, I'm no different than any other average American person. I just happened to see something in a particular time in my life that set me off on a search that has resulted in... What was that? In, uh, well, it was uh, in 1966 when I was with the Navy. One of the things that I saw was uh, a UFO what they call a UFO, of mm -hmm. course, th this wasn't unidentified, this was a craft. And it was uh, approximately the size of a midway class aircraft carrier. came up out of the ocean while I was the port lookout on a submarine between Pearl Harbor and the Portland, Seattle area. Tumbled on its axis and went up into the clouds. It was metallic, it was a machine, there was no doubt about it. It was witnessed by myself, the captain, the officer of the deck, the starboard lookout, the chief quartermaster, Chief Quintero, who took photographs of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were told that it was classified and that we were not to discuss it, not even amongst ourselves. And, um, uh, you know, all my life I had never believed in these things, although I had heard many stories about them. Uh, but that was the most, probably the most significant eye-opening, mind-opening event that's ever happened to me in my mm -hmm. life. Um, and uh, later I was attached to Naval Security and Intelligence, uh, and uh, while I was on the intelligence briefing team for the commander-in-chief of the Pacific Fleet, I saw top-secret documents that came across my desk in, in the process of preparing briefings on incidents involving naval ships, and naval mm -hmm. personnel, or naval stations, um, and UFOs that uh, indicated that, uh, indicated it flatly stated that UFOs are real, mm -hmm. they're machines, they're uh, piloted by extraterrestrial beings, Another, another intelligence, in other words. Right, other intelligences, and that they're interacting with the United States government secretly. Uh, and it's really wrong to say the United States government, because it's, a, it's really a secret um, organization that was created under a, a governing body called Majesty 12, sometimes called Majority 12, nicknamed MJ-12. Okay, this has not, nothing to do with the secret government, is it? This is another branch. No, this, this has something to do with the secret government because through this organization, the secret government actually controls the executive branch of the United States of America. Okay, now, I want to go back because you have a lot of information. I want to go back to the MJ-12 and also uh, what they've seen on the documents and what you've seen and all the other questions that we have to ask. Now, what is the secret government? We've heard about this a long time. At least uh, some people have brought it forward. What is the secret government? The secret government was actually created, um, the secret world government was actually created in 1952 when an alliance of all the, the secret powers, the, the powers behind the thrones, occurred because of the knowledge of this extraterrestrial presence mm -hmm. had to be dealt with. And they had to create a one world government, in other words, unite mankind against a possible uh, extraterrestrial threat from mm -hmm. out there, if it really exists. Mm -hmm. uh, the other side of the coin is maybe they created this extraterrestrial threat from out there and they have the technology that we've created here on Earth ourselves and are making us think that it exists. Mm -hmm. But in any case, all these secret powers made an alliance in 1952. It's called the Bilderberg Group. 
And they are really running the world. The through, Bilderberg Group. Okay. Yes, through what they call the Policy Committee. And their Where is their HQ? That's in uh, Geneva, Switzerland. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the United States, the Soviet Union, everyone participates in this. We've all been secretly allies for, for many, many years. In fact, we were never really enemies. Uh, but that, that type of Hegelian uh, conflict situation has been created artificially in order to get large sums of money in the form of taxes and, and other things from the populace of the world in order to fund these secret activities and actually bring about the New World Order, which, by the way, on September the 11th, the first official mention of the New World Order, which I've been talking about for years, mm -hmm. was made by President Bush. He mentioned it three times in his speech on September the 11th. Since then, uh, Shevardnadze of Russia has made the statement, and I quote, Iraq is... Uh, is performing an act of terrorism against the emerging New World Order, unquote. And uh, Margaret Thatcher and many other heads of government are now talking about it. It's a, it's a daily subject of conversation, and it goes right over the heads of most Americans. They don't understand this. Hmm. And they had better wake up and understand it, because in order for us to join a New World Order, we have to lose our Bill of Rights. What's happened in Russia and uh, well, Eastern Europe? We've lost Europe. these already, haven't we? Well, we've already lost the Fourth Amendment. Mm -hmm. uh, we've lost certain portions of the First Amendment. For instance, uh, people don't believe that books can be banned in this country. Mm -hmm. If they were paying attention, just last week a book was banned in this country. It's the book written by the Mossad officer about the Israeli intelligence group. There was a court order issued um, to the publisher not to publish that book anymore. Uh, Barbara Honiger's book, uh, October Surprise. If you go and try to order it, you can't get it. And if you look in the book, oh. there's an R by the book, and that R means restricted. People don't understand this. So there is suppression going on. There is not only suppression going on, but there is a campaign underway that if it's not successful, um, and the campaign is to get rid of our rights, but to make you want to. That's what the drug mm -hmm. war is all about. And uh, if that doesn't work, then you they will... the drug war is yeah. to make you get rid of our rights? That's right. That's fascinating material. Wow. And, well, it's already happening. You, you notice in all the polls, Americans are indicating that they're willing to give up some of their rights to get the drugs and the crime off the, of the streets. This has never happened in, in the history of this so country. So all this was manipulated by some other powerful force, a secret government, in other words. Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, anybody can figure this out with simple mathematics and a little bit of common sense. Uh, if you just look at a map, that, that if you can find one that has all of the cities and towns in the United States on it, count each one of them. It's going to take you a long time to do that. Oh, I imagine. But you count each one of those cities and towns, and then you realize that each one of them are full of drugs and have to be kept full of drugs to supply the people who buy these drugs on a daily basis. And then it becomes mind-boggling. And you have to realize that this takes tremendous amounts of money that nobody, no individual or no individual group has. It takes an organization. It takes a supply network. It takes transportation. It takes uh, a distribution network. It takes coordination. It is incredible what an organization would have to have just to furnish everybody in this country with a box of Cracker Jacks. God, it's like some giant enigma had this enveloped itself around the planet that nothing can be done because it's manipulated and controlled by this secret government, in other words. Well, that's true, but something can be done. You see, most of their power comes from the fact that it's secret. And you have to understand that anything that is secret... But it's secret, not secret any longer. That's right. But, but uh, most average people don't believe that this is occurring. They find it, it goes way beyond their concept of... In other of, words, oh no, it can't possibly be happening. We trust these people explicitly. That's right. That's not be happening. We trust these people explicitly. That's right. No. That's the attitude. Uh, and especially in America, where they believe that this is the best government in the world, it can't happen to us, and they don't understand it's not the government. It's a secret organization that is penetrated, infiltrated the government, and actually taken over our government, and is now causing the government to act against us through their actions, not through what was legally and constitutionally set up to perform as our government. Mm -hmm. And that is functioning the way it's supposed to. And when it's run by citizens, real citizens, then it works. Wow. This is, this is mind-boggling to think about, that this huge organization is manipulating, controlling not only drugs and crime, uh, and you also would say it's part of the, the Hussein war in Iraq right now? Absolutely, yes. What's going to be the outcome in your perception? 
Well, uh, let me give you the There's scenario. There's too many people over there, and this guy, you know, he, I, any government leader with all the pressure being put upon him now would completely surrender or just evacuate Kuwait and say, I'm going home. Mm -hmm. okay. this, is, this is orchestrated. Hussein is reading his script and acting out his role to bring about the New World Order. You see, change can't come about without conflict because people resist change. It's the normal thing. You must have a disaster. And conflict is economy. Right, to institute great change. Not only that, but think who's over there. They've sent a half a million of our most devout, most dedicated patriots who are sworn to uphold and protect the Constitution. They're now in the Middle East. They're out of the country. They're in a position, in a foreign environment, very hostile environment, where they can be killed very easily with chemical warfare. And I, I have to tell you this from my stint in the military, that um, our troops have no protection in a desert environment against chemical warfare. Those men are dead. They have to get the patriots out of the country, as many as they can, and they have to get rid of them. Because patriots will not allow them to suspend the, suspend the Constitution and join the New World Order. The ones who are left, <coughs> when this happens, are targeted and will be rounded up in the dead of night, probably on Thanksgiving, Christmas, or New Year's, when they know that everyone will be home, uh, in order to, to bring about the New World Order, to join the New World Order. Um, that's what's happening in the Middle East. Nobody cares if Hussein invaded Kuwait. Nobody believes, or, or could possibly believe, that we're there to prevent the price of oil from going up to $26 a gallon because our mere presence has driven it up to almost $35 a gallon. Mm. If there's a war, it's going to go much higher than that. Bush told the truth when he said that out of the Middle East conflict will come the New World Order. He was telling the truth. And it's one of the few times that he's told the truth. Okay, now Bill, <coughs> You're absolutely fascinating, and this is information which is startling to a lot of people. It will be. Now, I want to get back to the, the M12, or the ones who are in contact with extraterrestrial uh, intelligences, whether they come from alternate realities or other dimensions, or whether they come from some physical uh, time place. Well, I have to tell you that I've never seen an extraterrestrial, okay. never in my life. I've but seen, seen the craft. I've seen the craft. I know How many that it's times? real. Um, <clears throat> this, between a seven and ten minute period, uh, this thing or these things... Uh, when you were aboard the carrier? Yeah, when I was aboard the submarine. I uh, went up and down, um, I don't know how many times, but many, many times during that period. Did you check it on the sonar? Did the other people check it on sonar in the submarine? We had sonar contact, we had radar contact. When it was in the water, we had sonar. When it was in the air, we had radar. Did it ever make any intelligent contact with you folks? Not that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if they had, I wouldn't be aware of it yeah. because I had no, nothing to do with the radio room and they didn't talk about what they did uh, and they shouldn't. Now, I was I'm going to ask you as well, there's so much I want to ask you about the, the, all the papers that you witnessed and all the documents that you've witnessed. Did it give a clean, cut, clear, uh, categorically, uh, categorical statement that UFOs do exist, that there are other intelligences yes. that they can't... Uh, That's fathom? exactly what it said. Did Would it you indicate where they come <coughs> from, or say from a physical dimension, or from a, a parallel dimension, like a, a... No, according to the documents that I saw, they're real, just as real as you and I. They're from mm -hmm. this dimension, and they're from uh, other planets, and, and specifically named a planet somewhere within the Pleiades, a planet that uh, is around Barnard's star. Uh, it mentioned the Sirius, uh, the star Sirius. Mm -hmm. It mentioned a planet around the star Betelgeuse in the constellation of Orion. Mm -hmm. um, it mentioned um, a planet in the uh, star, the, the, the binary star grouping of Zeta 1 and 2 Reticuli. Mm -hmm. um, and it stated that there were at least four groups of four different species of extraterrestrial beings here visiting and surveying mm -hmm. the Earth. Now, in other words, they're walking the streets right now. Yes, if this whole thing is real. You see, I found, uh, and I have to say this, I believe they're real. Let me, let me put that first. I really believe they're real. But I don't believe that they're the bad guys that, the, that the, the secret powers want us to believe that they are. Because if they're real, they've been visiting us for thousands and thousands of years. Mm, yeah. And if they wanted to kill us all, they could have done that thousands oh, of years ago. Oh, they could have taken over the planet, but they're not allowed right. to intrude, I feel. Now, when you say the good guys and bad guys, like Betty Hill, she was visited, she and Barney Hill, 
were about the standard guy, about five foot high with a big large head, big eyes and things mm -hmm. like that. And then there's other people who indicate that the greys, which are large heads but smaller, these are negative characters. And then there's some people who say they're, they look like any one of us. They're in human form and you can't tell them without a scorecard. Mm -hmm. Now, what is your perception of all the information that you have received? My perception is that I believe extraterrestrials are real, but it doesn't mean that I'm right, because I've found evidence and statements as far back as 1917 by people who belong to this secret mm -hmm. power group uh, to create an artificial alien threat from another planet in order to unite humanity and bring about the new world order. Uh, so there's a possibility, oh yeah, so there's a possibility that this thing could be a total hoax, because they have, they have the capability to have actually rewritten history. You well, see. they can, certainly. Yeah. Um, but I believe that they're real. I believe, however, they're being made out to be bad guys to bring about this new world order. To and bring us closer together, in other words, so they, they, we can be manipulated into a, a unified thought. In right. Other words. But, but what we're being manipulated into is not going to be good for us. It's going to be good for the secret power group, for the very mm -hmm. wealthy, elite, rich, mm -hmm. um, powerful people. We're literally going to be relegated to economic slavery. And if we go out of the, the confines that they put us in, are in, the, in the, um, the pattern of actions that they wish us to, to act out, mm -hmm. um, they will simply uh, put you into a, uh, a camp which is going to be called a mental treatment center to reprogram you. Much like and those camps they put the Japanese American citizens in during World War II. Right, and if that doesn't work, it's extermination time because they're not going to mess with anybody. In other words, they're going to start... Uh in other words, your life would be a threat, too, wouldn't it? My life was uh, right, many times? forfeit when I first orphan, open, opened my mouth. Um, but, you know, I had to make a decision. Am I going to live out my life knowing inside what I know and betraying my fellow man and hating myself for that? Or am I going to speak up and tell people what I know mm -hmm. and have some self-respect and be able to go and meet my God and, and look him straight in the eye and say, I did a good thing. Well, you'd have been congratulated so, to me. Well, I think this is the choice that people have to make on a daily basis, whether they know what I know or not, in order for this to be a good world. Because well, if everybody acted <coughs> in that manner, we would never have any problems on this earth. Are there many people who uh, want to ridicule you and put you down? Well, that happens all the time. It comes with the territory. Absolutely. And uh, at first it hurts and it stings and it feels terrible, but after a while you get used to it, you don't even pay any attention to it after that. Oh, yeah, there are some people who um, uh, their whole life's mission is to shut me up, and it yeah. won't work. It's I tell you, you are in uh, uh, Naval Intelligence, and I happen to be part of that organization for a little while. I was a photographer, though. I went there with the photograph and got the images. Then I was told, keep my mouth shut. Uh, what I seen, you know, it's top secret, confidential. You got a nice tailor shop. You want to keep it, want to keep it open? Mm -hmm. It's almost like giving a little bit of a threat. If you say too much, you know, oh, it, it's, they're going to spank you. It's definitely a threat. People are now getting letters. People who go up to this position where I told them about near Area 51 in Nevada, where they can see these craft fly. Okay, Area 51 in Nevada. Mm -hmm. What is this? This is a location where people can see UFOs fly? It used to be one of the remote, most remote spots in the United States, but of course now there's there's people, you know... Uh, What's the nearest city to it, Area 51? Uh, I believe it's Ash Springs, and that's about uh, maybe 40 miles. And if they were to go point. there, what would they see? They will actually see these craft, what we call flying saucers, flying in the air. Not the big baby that you saw from the submarine. No, no. Like they'll see the little scout ships or right. something like that? Right, they'll see those about 30 feet in the so it's flying in the air. Not the big baby that you saw from the submarine. No, no. Right. They'll see the little scout ships. Or right. Like that. They'll see those about 30 feet in, the, in diameter. Uh, they'll see them fly. They're piloted by United States personnel pilots. They are. So oh, these yeah. UFOs are they're created by Americans. I don't, I don't know if we have the capability to build or them or not. Have they been given to us, and are, we're being trained to be able to fly them? According to the documents I saw, if, if aliens are real, if I wasn't being used as a pawn, three of them were given to us, and we recovered uh, many more that, that crashed, have crashed on the earth. Well, we hear about uh, uh, what was it, the the, the Hangar 18 mm -hmm. out at Andrews Air Force Base. We hear about another one, the Roswell, New Mexico incident, where these craft 
have crashed and they have the little guys on ice or something like that. And the one where Eisenhower went into a hangar in California and was given three days to clamber aboard a spacecraft mm -hmm. with the scientists. They were mm -hmm. told not to touch. Is there any truth to this report or what? The truth to all of it except Hangar 18 was really at Wright Patterson Air Force Base Wright in Ohio. Wright Patterson, in Ohio, pardon me. Uh, and for many years there was uh, a craft stored in that hangar. There were alien bodies uh, refrigerated in deep freeze in that hangar. Um, but the, you see the story leaked out. You can never keep anything that fantastic a secret no. because no matter how bad somebody doesn't want to talk about it, it's, it's, it, it's so heavy on their soul that they have to eventually. Oh, yeah. So uh, there were so many stories going around about Hangar 18 at Wright-Patterson that they had to move everything out of the hangar, and eventually they actually let in a TV t uh, uh, crew who filmed the inside of the hangar and, and showed that there was nothing in there, but that there were some strange things in there that, that are not normally found in an aircraft hangar, mm -hmm. such, as, such as freezers. Um, um, well, that could be for cryonics. In the wall. Yes. Yeah, cryonic experimentation of you know freezing a person so he could be resurrected again. Um, so, from what I gather, they have moved some of the artifacts, at least from what I heard, to Quantico, Virginia. Uh, or I some behind in Las Vegas, Nevada, in some uh, agricultural station. There's an um, um, alien technology unit in Las Vegas, near Nellis Air Force Base. Super secret. Trucks go in and out of there, always escorted by security vehicles. Um, at night, there's the most incredible um, light um, security thing set up around a fence that you can see through binoculars. Uh, and that, I don't really know what goes on there, but alien technology center. I mean, they're not talking about the Mexican people. And they're not talking about Canadians. And they're not talking about people from Africa. Uh, they're talking about extraterrestrials when they're talking about alien technology center there at Las Vegas. Um, as far as Quantico, I don't know if they moved anything to Quantico, but I know that in Camp Lejeune, um, people, North Carolina. Yes, mm -hmm. people have indicated to me that there are alien craft stored in hangars at Camp Lejeune under uh, heavy guard. And it's, uh, it's under a project called Project Hanel. Um, I've heard this from many different sources, all ex-Marines mm -hmm. who were stationed at Camp Lejeune. Bill, have you ever seen any photographs of some of these extraterrestrials who ha were basically killed in, when their craft crashed? Yes, I saw photographs of them. I saw the, the autopsy reports. What do they look like? Um, the ones that I, in fact, you can get an, a, a beautiful description from them. Just read Whitley Strieber's book, Majestic. Uh, I was really suspicious of Strieber uh, because he never referred to extraterrestrials. He never called them what his mind would tell them that they are, mm -hmm. demons or angels mm -hmm. or extraterrestrials. He always called them the visitors. And that's an indication to me that something was not straight with Whitley Strieber. When he published Majestic, I read that book, and it is the actual true account of the Roswell incident, and there's only one place he could have got it, because I saw the documents that this information From the came horse's from. mouth, in other words. From the horse's mouth, which means that Whitley Strieber is really working for the Central Intelligence Agency. And I have to tell you that everything in that book is absolutely true. The documents in there are the real documents. The only thing that's been changed is the name of the people, and the name of the projects, and the name of the organization. It's Whoa. Operation Majority, not Operation Majestic 12. Uh, and, and so on and so forth. The person who is the main character is really portraying James Forrestal, and all this information came out of Forrestal's secret diaries. He was the man who was in control of the actual Roswell recovery back in 1947, Why? and they killed him by throwing him out the window of the Bethesda Naval Hospital because he was talking about it. He wanted to tell the world what had happened. Well, on that note, <laughs> we're going to continue with Linda next. I'm Linda Pellerin, and this is Dimensions in Parapsychology, and our guest today is a man uh, by the name of Bill Cooper, who has absolutely been fascinating me as I've been filming this show. Uh, I don't know where to start with you, aside from the fact that, you know, what you're doing is you're letting our viewers see and understand that what, what may seem to be obvious are... Uh, situations that are set up by agents uh, in order to lead the public in a specific direction of thought 
for a far grander design. Right. Is this correct? That is true. Um, you have to understand that that if, if aliens are real, it's the most closely guarded, highest secret that not just this government, but all the governments of the world are trying to contain mm -hmm. for their own reasons. Some of them very good, I might add. Some of them highly illegal and not good. Um, and you have to understand that any UFO group or any UFO researcher who's trying to discover this secret is an enemy. Just like a foreign country would be an enemy. And just as they would go after foreign agents and foreign intelligence organizations to, sh to stop them from discovering the truth, they go after researchers and UFO organizations and uh, magazines and all of these things to make sure that you don't discover the truth and you only find out what they want you to find out and they do it in ways that uh, some of it is the truth, some of it is disinformation. Many times they pick people that have titles, people that are well respected in the public eye. That's and when correct. they come out and speak out, then you do believe what they say, or else the average American does. Sure, and they create situations that will make you believe them. For instance, uh, the, the, the uh, artificial antagonism between Philip Klass and Stanton Friedman. Uh -huh. You see, this is, this is all a show. It's all show. It lends credibility to Stanton Friedman. How about when Whitley Strieber was on the air, I think it was on the Mike King show, uh, across from, I believe the man's last name is Blum. Howard Blum. Yeah, Howard. If you just read his book out there. I haven't read it yet, but I was, I was thinking of it. You need to read it because it's a classic case of government disinformation. That's why I'm getting into this. You now. see, if, if the documentation that I saw is real, and I believe that every bit of it is, okay. um, then the, the United States did not create a, a working group to look into the situation of aliens in 1978 or 76 or 82 or any other time. Uh -huh. Either Howard Bloom is, is working with them to put out information that would tend to make the average public not believe the true facts. Yes. Or he's being fed information to write in his book. That's incorrect? That's incorrect. They would like to, to people to think that aliens have not been coming here, that they have not been interacting with them for all this time. Um, but they're really looking into the matter and they think there may be something to UFOs and they're really listening to the signals from space to find out if there's intelligence. Uh, and then sometime in the near future they will say, we've made contact. We've actually found that they're there. And then they will stage some kind of a landing in front of the television cameras for the whole world to see, <laughs> to say, yes, they're real. And we've just discovered them, uh -huh. and we know that they're there, and they're so far advanced from us that we'd better unite this world yes. together in order to face this possible threat from outer space. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Very, very interesting. Um, this will happen. I guarantee you it will happen. I can do agree <laughs> with you. You know, now also, um, do, we have Bud Hopkins who's written books. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have the Whitley Strievers and, and the Blooms, or, or Blum, I'm mm -hmm. not sure how you pronounce that. Uh, are these men, would you say that they were agents? Uh, Whitley Strieber absolutely is. So is Bud Hopkins. Mm -hmm. um, Howard Bloom, I don't know if he's an agent or if he's just been well, fed wonder, information to write I always about. wonder about people that will state things, mm -hmm. and then when you ask them to qualify it or give more information, they say it's A, either not important, Mm -hmm. Or B, they tried to make you feel foolish on the air for even asking it. Mm -hmm. Or C, they deny it. You know, what are you talking about? They, you know, I always wonder about that because they've made all these bold statements, these blanket remarks, and mm -hmm. then they won't qualify anything, and you wonder where they're coming from. Well, that's because they don't know the subject, really. They've, they've been given exactly. certain things to say. To go beyond that, they can't field those questions. They can't talk about it because then they'd be making up information and they would be caught in a network of lies. And, and you know, we had... Making up information and they would be caught in a network of lies. And, and, you know, we had a certain astronaut on the air who, when I was going over his material, claimed that he felt that there was life on... There could have been at one time on Mars or Venus and that there was life on other planets. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when we had him on the show, he completely denied everything, and when Mr. Bond asked him about the uh, ri uh, rings in the wheat field, mm -hmm. uh, he said, well, yes, now that can't be denied, and we must look into this seriously. So, I mean, there was this back and forth political jargon going on. He's parroting the government yes, point of is. view. Uh, privately, he would probably tell you the truth. 
yeah. uh, off well, the record. Maybe this one wouldn't. But <laughs> well, I've talked to a lot of them, uh, or, or many of them, I should say, and they've told me the truth off the record. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't say publicly what they told me because it was off the record, and if I do that, they will say they didn't say it, Right. Uh, and that I'm making it up. Right. Um, and, and they can say that rightfully because when they tell me something off the record, I understand that you, you're not supposed to, to talk about it publicly. Uh, but I have to tell you this, that, and, and you, can, you can not believe it or you can call me a liar or, or anything you want. And okay. not, not you, but you know, <laughs> whoever's uh, watching this program. Uh, they have told me that they did see things on the moon. They saw flying saucers. They saw a base. They saw uh, all kinds of strange things. They've seen on the moon and Mars, from the photographs that came back from Mars and from their own observations on the moon, that there's the remains of an ancient civilization. A one-time civilization. Yeah, that had at least reached the Bronze Age. On Mars, there's the remains of uh, agricultural terracing. There's a face. There are pyramids. There's the remains of a city. Uh, there's all kinds of things. On the moon, there are pyramids. Uh, there, um, uh, there are uh, obelisks on the moon. Uh, if you well, saw, that shows evolution. Yes, it does. Oh, and if you, gosh. if you saw 2001, the movie. Yes. Uh, they they were trying to tell us in that movie. That movie is not fiction. I mean, it portrays something that's going to happen in the future. I find a lot of the movies aren't so fictional. That's right. <laughs> the obelisk in that movie on Earth, where the monkey came up and touched it, and all of a sudden yes. he had an evolution in consciousness. Yes. Uh, he, he evolved at that point. That obelisk represented the extraterrestrial influence on humanity in our own history. Okay. The obelisk they found on the moon represents what they really found on the moon. And what they portrayed as happening out in space is, is something that, that uh, is going to happen in the future. Well, we're going to get back on this subject as soon as we take a brief break. Ladies and gentlemen, the late Yul Brynner. I really wanted to make a commercial when I discovered that I was that sick and my time was so limited I wanted to make that commercial that says simply, now that I'm gone, I tell you, don't smoke. Whatever you do, just don't smoke. If I could take back that smoking, we wouldn't be talking about any cancer. I'm convinced of that. I'm Linda Pellerin, and this is Dimensions in Parapsychology, and our guest today is Bill Cooper. Uh, we were talking about UFOs and government secrets and cover-ups and all of those things and people that pose as uh, information getters and information givers that really may be secret agents um, leading the public into uh, certain modes of thought. Now, before we get on the Kennedy issue, mm -hmm. uh, the assassination, uh, I would like to ask you if you know of or who you know of that has actually had an alien encounter. Uh, who I know Physical alien encounter. Yeah, not just the craft or the saucer, but if you know of anyone <clears throat> personally who's had an alien encounter that leads you to believe that, they, that these aliens do walk. Yes, I've, I've met um, several people. I, I probably would never have known it in, in my life if I had not come forward and talked. But they, they come to me to tell me about their experiences, and they call me and they write me. I have letters that are incredible. Just absolutely incredible. Well, and how about secret documents, though? Have you ever seen anything written where they've actually had uh, captured or found uh, the dead body of an alien? And, and oh, yes. Yes, and I've read the autopsy reports, and uh, we found uh, live aliens. In fact, the movie E.T. is the story of an alien which they called E.B., which, who was captured in, mm -hmm. the, in the late 40s. Uh, they found him wandering in the desert, actually, just like the movie starts out. Right. And uh, they were hot on his trail. They finally captured him. Um, and he lived until 1952. He, he died in uh, June 2, 1952. Uh, Project Sigma was actually a result of his illness. Uh, they made a, a valiant attempt to try to contact his race, if this is all true, uh, in space in order to gain favor with an obviously technologically superior <laughs> race that could have squashed us if they wanted to. It was an opportunity for us to say, hey, uh, we found one of your people here. Uh, he's ill. We want to save his life. Please come and help us. They did uh, establish contact. They did come to the Earth. It resulted in the meeting between Eisenhower and the aliens in 1954. Um, but it was too late to save his life. He, he had died in the, in the meantime. Have they established languages, or they must have? 
languages to communicate. From what I understand, at least this one particular group that we're interacting with, um, and, and they have a, an object that's crystalline in nature that right. they can hold in their hand. Uh, I guess it's like a computer. When, when they talk, or, or transmit whatever it is that we're receiving that we understand as English, uh, this device is what makes it possible. And when we talk back to them, this device makes them understand us. Crystal translator. Well, I don't know if it's a crystal or what it is. The, the documents describe it as being crystal in, in experience. Uh -huh. But we know that if we could ever unlock the secret of the crystal, we know it's a radio transmitter and a radio receiver. Crystals transmit radio frequency. Right. They also receive radio frequency. You can make a radio receiver in your home with a crystal, with no power source. You don't have to plug it in the wall or anything. You can receive radio signals with a crystal. Uh, we also know that, that its structure indicates that it could be used as a storage device for information if we could unlock the secret of how to do that. And scientists are trying to work with that to find that out right now. Um, and if we ever do that, we'll be able to store probably the entire knowledge of the world in one quartz crystal about the size of this. Well, that this. would be efficient. <laughs> yes, it would be very efficient. Quite extraordinary, uh, too. Mm -hmm. Now, getting off this subject a little bit and, and jumping over to the Kennedy assassination, what do you feel really happened there? What have you read or what do you know that we don't? Well, I know that Kennedy knew about the drug situation and he ordered them to stop bringing drugs into this country and selling them to the American people. He ordered them also to divulge the presence of extraterrestrials on this earth to the American people within one year, and he ordered them to develop a plan to make that possible. Um, they decided that it was premature. Of course, the large sums of money that are derived from drugs, they not only wanted that money to finance their black projects, but they were deriving personal profit from this also. Uh, it's just beyond the capability of a human being to resist temptation of that magnitude, I believe. I believe that uh, our, our teachings are right when they say, don't put yourself in, a, in an opportunity to be tempted. Um, and they ordered his assassination. And the people involved were Division Five of the FBI, the CIA, the Secret Service, and the Office of Naval Intelligence, who performed all the changes on the body. Uh, they're the ones who did the autopsy. Navy was in charge of the body from the time that, that it left uh, Parkland Hospital until the time that the autopsy was finished and the body was was buried. Um, they switched his brain with that of someone else so that no one would know the true nature of the projectile. Um, Oswald never fired a shot. He wasn't even up on the floor. He was down in the entrance of the building when this happened. Uh, and I'm going to show photographs that prove that. We have a photograph of Oswald standing in the doorway oh, of the building as the motorcade passes by. Um, and we have photographs of him after he was arrested wearing the same exact clothing. It's, it's Oswald, there's no doubt about it. Um, and we know we have a film, and I'm going to be showing it today uh, here at the, the Whole Life Expo, uh, and nobody's ever seen what I'm going to show today. They've, I've shown a photograph that shows uh, who killed Kennedy, who actually shot him in the head. The long shot's all missed except for the one in the throat. Is the man still alive today? No, he died in 1985 of cancer. Uh, it's a shame that he's not alive today, but we have the film that shows him actually turn around and shoot President Kennedy point blank with the pistol in his left hand over his right shoulder. Uh, and was he a Secret Service man near the motorcade? He was a Secret Service agent driving the car. He was the oh, driver, okay. William Greer. Uh, and I'm going to show Drew? William Greer. Greer, William Greer. Yes. And uh, today I'm going to show a film that nobody's ever seen before, and they're going to see it with their own eyes. How'd you get it, Bill? <laughs> Well, I got it from a, uh, from a CIA agent. His name is John Lear. John Lear, okay. <laughs> yeah. I was talking to John Lear in 1988 on the telephone. I told him what I had seen in these documents, that William Greer had shot President Kennedy and that it was plainly visible in a film withheld from the public. He said, would you like to see the film? These documents, that William Greer had shot President Kennedy and that it was plainly visible in a film withheld from the public. He said, would you like to see the film? I Why said is I everyone didn't. coming out with this now? Why is everyone venturing forth now more so than ever? I don't know. I, I really don't. confession time? Or? Well, you see, after a long period of time, there, there, there are so many people who have this information, and, be, and it's so weighty. I can't tell you what it does or what it did to my, my being, my soul, uh, having this information and not talking about it. For 16 years, I kept quiet. 
Um, when I first got out of the Navy, I tried to make this knowledge known to a couple of reporters, and I told them, please don't call Washington and try to verify this. Uh, but they didn't believe what I was saying. They did call Washington and tried to verify it, and it resulted in two very nasty attacks on my life. Uh, and the scars you see on my face are results of that. I lost my left leg. Yes. They visited me in the hospital. They asked me, uh, you know, are you going to shut up, or, or the next time are we going to have to do it permanently? I said, I'm going to be very good. Uh, you don't have to worry about me anymore. And I kept my mouth shut for 16 years. But it literally ate, ate me up. It was eating at my very soul. It was destroying me personally. I couldn't have a close relationship with the woman. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything um, right because I was afraid that I would say something that would endanger their life. Um, when I started feeling real bad, I would go and try and drink it away, you know, with alcohol and, and things. And um, that didn't work. Well, you were living a lie. Yes, I was. I was living a lie, and, and I, I hated myself be, because of this. Uh, when I first when I started talking about this and telling the truth, then all of a sudden my personal life came together. I feel wonderful now. I'm not afraid of anything. For it was a very fascinating interview and uh, a worth of knowledge, and I'm so happy that we had you on the show, and I hope we have you back again. Well, thank you. All right, and thank you very much, and Bryce will be right back. Thank you, Linda. Continuing now on Dimensions in Parapsychology, our guest today is Bill Cooper. He's an extraordinary man who really, something has been bothering him for many, many years, and it's like a festering cancer with inside that he had to validate and get rid of for his own personal, normal life. And some of the things you've been talking about are really mind-boggling to think about. I've heard of similar things myself in my career of doing this program of talking to many people, like the late Ivan Sanderson, who is a a scientist and a biologist and an archaeologist, anything with an ologist or bi he was. He was talking about some of the things like the having a, uh, the Sasquatch, the Bigfoot, the Yeti. They have one of these uh, creatures in a block of ice and they keep him frozen because the man who shot him, if they find out that this Yeti is more human-like than animal-like, then the man stands to be in a murder charge and things like that. He was talking about when he was in, in British intelligence down and around the Grand Chaco and seeing a craft within the water going about 240 knots, about I don't know how many fathoms deep within the ocean itself. Mm -hmm. There's lots of things like that happening. Now, uh, the planning for Kennedy's assassination was all staged. Uh, it was all cleverly planned. In yes, words. absolutely. Yes. Was Johnson have anything to do with that? I don't believe Johnson had anything to do with the planning, but Johnson had to be told that it was going to happen, and uh, maybe not win, but that it was going to happen because uh, he would have been the next president. And they had, was, to, yeah. yes, they had to have somebody who was on their side in order to, to uh, phony the, the Warren Commission, the Warren Report, to make sure that the cover-up was maintained. In other words, Johnson knew ahead of time that Kennedy was going to be assassinated. He had to, and they had to know that he was going to maintain a cover-up. Otherwise, they could not have allowed Johnson to be the president. Uh, because then he would have uh, instigated a real investigation which would have discovered the real facts of the matter. So while Johnson probably did not plan it, he had to be a part of it, he had to know about it, he had to have assured the power group that, that, that did this uh, that he would maintain the cover-up. Um, and of course he did. Now what about Bobby Kennedy's assassination? Was that also planned? By Sir Han, Sir Han? I haven't really uh, gone in depth into Bobby Kennedy's assassination. I do know that it was not uh, it, it was not solely the act of Sir Han, Sir Han. For instance, mm -hmm. over nine shots were fired in the ballroom. Sir Han, Sir Han's revolver only held eight. None of the security people or, or Secret Service agents uh, fired a shot, according to their own testimony. Uh, Sir Han, Sir Han was always that? in. Pardon? Did you believe that? No, I don't believe it because the the man who shot Bobby Kennedy was also a security. Person. And very skilled. Yes. Um, you see, Sirhan Sirhan was always in front of Barbie, Bobby Kennedy, but the death shot came from close behind his right uh -huh. ear, uh, which meant, and there's only one person who was standing there. His name is Caesar. He was a security uh, guard. He was one of the people who were supposed to be protecting the president, just like William Greer was supposed to be, or mm -hmm. protecting Bobby, just like William Greer was supposed to be protecting President Kennedy. Um, so we, we know that it was a conspiracy, that there was more than one person involved, and again, it was a security person who killed Bobby Kennedy uh, and not Sirhan Sirhan, um, who, but who was involved. We also know that Vicki Cooper, the editor of UFO Magazine, is the niece of, of Grant Cooper, who was Sirhan Sirhan's 
uh, defense attorney and that he did not defend Sirhan Sirhan. He wanted to make sure he was guilty. Uh, and uh, Grant Cooper has all kinds of ties to the CIA and the Rosselli mob who was in cahoots with the CIA to bring drugs in the country and also to uh, uh, help assassinate Castro when they were trying to do that. You know, it's very disillusioning to think about that we have organizations like the CIA, Secret Service, and FBI and things like that which may not be working in our behalf. I can guarantee you they're not. They're working for the secret world power structure toward a new world order, a one world government. They're actually working to destroy the sovereignty of the United States, to destroy the Constitution so that this new world order can come about. The intelligence community has never worked for the American citizen. It was created to serve the secret structure. That's why the, the laws governing it are set up so that nobody can look into what they're doing. Do you realize that the National Security Agency, by executive order of the President of the United States, is not subject to any laws of this country or any state in this country? And the executive order states, it says, that the National Security Agency is not and will not be subject to any law unless it is specifically stated in the law that the National Security Agency is subject to that law. So all these people uh, who are in this organization, if they do something, a minor infraction, they can't be touched? Like That's right. Uh, immunity for some diplomat? They can do anything they want. They're completely outside the law by executive order. Now, an executive order is a law written by the president which violates the Constitution, which says that there shall be separations between the branches of government and that Congress is responsible for the legislation. So they're setting these people up as little tiny mini demigods. That's exactly what they're doing, yeah. My God, that's a, a nice place to live. Now, do you feel that any extraterrestrial intervention, some other higher intelligence, will intervene eventually? No, I don't. Um, and I'll tell you why. Why, why would they? I, I'm so disappointed in all these people who say, well, I don't care what happens now. I'm not going to do anything to stop it because the benevolent aliens will come down and take me off of this planet when it happens. No way, right? No way. Why would they? Why would they take us to their planet to destroy their planet like we're destroying exactly. ours? You see? Exactly. There, there's no reason for it. The, the first law of any sentient being is self-preservation, and they're going to do things in their own best interest. And for their own best interest, they better not have any human beings on their planet. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's right. We need to change ourselves first. We need to become what we would like uh, others to be. In other words, everybody says, well, I wish the world was this way, and I wish that person was that way, and they'd stop doing this to me. Uh, they don't realize that if they would first be the person they want Bill, others to be. Bill, are you a religious guy? Um, you, believe in, you believe in God. I believe in God, yes. You're a spiritual definitely. being, more so than a religious person, I imagine. Yes, I, I, that's the way I would So the it. deity basically lives within you, and if people can touch into that within themselves and look for the good right. in themselves and all mankind, Yes then we could overcome what is going on at the present moment, eventually? Right. One of the, one of the greatest misconceptions that anyone can have is that man is God. Mm. Man is not God. We're uh, a fragment of that. We, we are a fragment of God, but man has to understand that no part can be as great or greater than the whole. Mm -hmm. So man cannot set himself up as God. People who think that man is God and worship knowledge and technology and believe that by the use of knowledge and technology man can become God or can be God mm -hmm. are actually practicing Satanism. And I'll ah. tell you why. The worship of knowledge is Satanism. The concept that man can be God or is God is Satanism. Not because I'm a Bible thumper or anything like that, but because if you believe the story in the Bible that Satan enticed Eve to pick the apple from the tree of knowledge mm -hmm. and make Adam eat it, which is the original sin, uh, the myth, yeah. then you have to understand if that apple represents knowledge, then the worship of that apple is Satanism because the whole thing was instigated by evil. Is Satanism because the whole thing was instigated by Satan. And who is the, who is the serpent? The, the new world power? I really don't know. Oh, the, the secret have, government? You have to understand that I'm not a prophet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, I don't I don't have any knowledge of all that I, I would say though that they certainly worship knowledge and have the concept that through technology man is God therefore I would have to say that, that that's probably right although I'm gonna have to tell you and your audience you have to decide that for yourself good for you now I want to find out what is your your future sight see what is your uh, prognation prognic can't even pronounce the word 
what is your predictions for the future, uh, especially when it comes to extraterrestrials or uh, UFOs and things of this nature? Are there going to be any full-scale landings? Well, I believe whether they're real or not, there's going to be a landing. If they're not real, there's still going to be a landing, and there's going to be human beings dressed up or by, by the sacred power structure. There was one basically at the World's Fair, and there was one at Freedom Land. They had a spacecraft parked out there. People could go aboard. It was like a dummy. But uh, people certainly said, wow, I'm going to go aboard that. Did you see the ending of the uh, Olympic Games in 1984? Yes. You should get a tape of the closing ceremony. It was I heard did. at night I in, had the, it. in the UFO. A spacecraft held yes. by a helicopter. It, well, it wasn't held by a helicopter. There was no helicopter up there holding this thing. They'll tell you that, but it's not true. Can you imagine the liability that they would have if they were carrying this thing suspended on a cable underneath a helicopter over the heads of, of hundreds of thousands of people? They wouldn't You're do it. You're meaning to say that that thing used in the 1984 Olympics, the closing ceremony... Was under its own power. Was under its own power? Yes. That's fascinating. With these laser lights dancing out of it? That's right. There was no helicopter. There was no cable. Whoa. That is heavy news. Now, the other thing is that there was a movie called... Uh, oh, what was it? It had Michael Rennie as the star. Uh, it was about, it came out, I think, 1952, the day the Earth stood still. Mm -hmm. Now, they indicated something like that did happen, but without the robot. Something like that did happen, according to the documents that I saw. Uh, there was a landing. Um, now, I don't know about the, 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 the being being shot and, and being chased all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, that I don't know about. I didn't read anything like that. But there was a landing that uh, they, they said that uh, they wanted to help us with our spiritual development. That, uh, but before they would do that, we had to destroy our nuclear weapons and destroy our nuclear power plants, mm -hmm. quit fooling exactly. around with, with uh, radioactivity, uh, because it would destroy us and destroy the Earth and, and would have profound effect upon the universe, because they said that everything is connected. Everything, and whatever happens here will affect the whole universe, will affect everything. And if we go out of balance, they go out of balance, and they're going to prevent that from happening. That's what they said. The other side of the coin is, what if they really were not so friendly and what if they were pretending to be in order for us to destroy our nuclear weapons? You see, that's what the government was faced with. They didn't know. Well, and they couldn't take the chance on, on disarming our nuclear weapons on the say-so of someone they didn't know anything about. Well, the funny thing is that 20% of the population who is into uh, spiritual matters and metaphysical uh, uh, programming or whatever, uh, they come out with the general consensus that uh, that this is not the case, that they cannot intrude and do something for us. We have to do it ourselves, and on a spiritual level, eventually to eradicate it by proper thinking, proper thought, and everything else. This is what I believe. Now, I, I believe the same thing. The other thing, there is an indication, is rumor going around that the movie, uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, that half the money uh, that was used to produce this was put up by the USIA. A lot of these movies about aliens that are portraying real events, all of a sudden the script shows up and the money shows up. Mysteriously. And, mysteriously, yes. And, uh, the, you know, I just used to live in California. I know a lot of people in Hollywood. Uh, and uh, there is no doubt that these things are secretly financed by the secret power group to put into the subconscious of the American people the fact that aliens are real, that they're here. Mm -hmm. Whether they are or not doesn't make any difference. The power group wants us to know that they're real and they're here um, so, that, um, so that they can bring about this new world order, so that we can, we can uh, face this with, with no panic. If, mm -hmm. Because if they're real, we're eventually going to have to come face to face with this. Yeah, we hear all about the Bermuda Triangle and things, Flight 19, December 5th, 1945. I was very much involved in that particular situation. Uh, where did the planes go? Where did the pilots go? You know, when Isaac Newton had something called zero minus a minus zero, where energy and matter meet, it creates a time continuum. Mm -hmm. Was that staged or was that something real? I, I really don't know, but you ask a very good question. Where did the planes go? Where did the pilots go? Uh, I saw documents that said that they, could, they go to these alien beings. So what they do with them, I don't know. But um, I, I saw photographs, official NASA photographs, of things on the moon that shouldn't be there when I was with Naval Intelligence. Now, there are several books out. Um, uh, One by Leonard. Saw somebody else is on the moon showing yeah. a derrick and a crater being filled within three days. Yeah. And then the, the NASA photographs, you can get these from NASA. And I well, think all you, you have to do is... You used to be able to get them from NASA. But you need the number behind yeah, the picture. But if you don't number. know the number, forget that it'll scare you. But shows the face upon the moon. And there's been a couple of psychics, Harold Sherman and uh, Ingo <laughs> Swan, who did that uh, 
projection to the planet Jupiter six months before the Jupiter flyby. Mm -hmm. They also projected to the surface of Mars and found the pyramids about four times the size of the Cheops pyramid in Giza. And the face on Mars, they said, has eyeballs and mm -hmm. teeth. Today I'm going to show... Uh, one reason I've never shown these photographs of what's on the moon and Mars is because I could never find photographs that I could prove were official NASA photographs. Uh, uh, even though you may have the yeah, even though if you have the photographs, if you can't prove they're official NASA photographs, they're always called into question. I have found now three books, official NASA publications, published by NASA, printed by the United States Government Printing Office, that shows the things on the moon. They were hard to find because when NASA discovered that they had published books with this information in it, they pulled them. They sent agents out and pulled them all out of libraries and out of bookstores and everywhere. But I knew that you couldn't pull every one of them, and we finally located a copy of each one of these three books. I'm going to be showing slides today. So you photographed all the good pictures? We photographed the cover of the book, the fly page that said it was printed by the U.S. government printing office. We have photographed the pictures in the book. You're going to see pyramids on the moon, pyramids on Mars, uh, agricultural terracing on Mars, the face on Mars. You're going to see tanks and towers and a, and a Christian cross on the moon. You're going, to see, uh, you're going to see a World War II bomber lying beside a crater on the moon. A B-59, I heard it was. Well, it looks like a, a, a B-24, actually. It looks like a Liberator, Liberator B-24 yeah. bomber. Okay. You're going to see uh, mining machines. You're going to see something, uh, a machine in a crater throwing dirt out of the crater over the rim. You're going to see domes, four domes all lined up in a row in so the crater Kepler. You would say, Bill, that uh, almost every one of the astronauts who went to the moon has seen something. Oh, of course. And you, and you they can tell it. by looking at their lives what's happened to them yeah. since they come back that, that they saw something else besides rocks up there. I mean, their whole lives have been altered beyond the believability uh, that all they did was make a trip to the moon and see a bunch of rocks. But right now, they, they seem so intimidated and so frightened to say anything about it. Well, we they just, are. They are, because then they will be instantly ridiculed. They can, they'll be subject to 10 years in prison, $10,000 fine, loss of all pain allowances due or ever to become due. They will be no longer a hero. They will be subject to public ridicule. But I'm going to show today a letter from Gordon Cooper. And in this letter, he wrote it to the UN. He says extraterrestrials are real and they're here. Bill Cooper, I <laughs> want to say thank you for that. Now, if a person wanted to reach you, how would they do that? Uh, I have a hotline in Los Angeles. It's 213-281-8222. Once again. 213-281-8222. Or they can write to me at 19744 Beach Boulevard, Suite 301, Huntington Beach, California, 92648. That's a deal. Bill Cooper, I want to say thank you very much. You've been a wonderful guest and a tremendous amount of information. And it boggles the mind. And I hope we can do it again sometime soon. Thank you. Thanks again. I am mind boggled, Linda. I cannot say. I, I, the I feel good. Yeah, I feel good too, but the sincerity of Bill Cooper is remarkable. I, I feel he's such a genuine guy. Yes, and he and has evidence. I love it. He's got evidence, and he's got tremendous amount of information, and I, I think he's a most remarkable man because he's coming out publicly to state this information. You know, many times on the air we say, oh, this person's a pioneer and that person, this man really is, and he's a very brave soul, and I'm very, very glad that I was able to meet a hero in our time. I agree. Yeah. Our time is up. Yes, it is. I'm Bryce Bond. And I'm Linda Pellerin. This has been Dimensions in Parapsychology. And have a wonderful day.